I hand over to the main maestro, Stephen, who's going to introduce <laughs> the team. Um, Stephen, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Sarah, and uh, welcome to all you wonderful agents um, to the second in this series of Secrets of Tobago webinars. Um, today we have uh, um, a fantastic area of Tobago that we're going to discuss and uh, introduce to you um, and highlight some of the secrets that uh, Tobago has to offer. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to start sharing my screen and then I'm going to introduce um, our wonderful guests. So this is where everything seems to work so well in practice. Ah, voila, okay. Hopefully you can all see the screen well. Now, first of all, uh, to introduce myself again, my name is Stephen Smith. I'm the sales and marketing manager for the beautiful island of Tobago, based here in the UK. Um, and today, um, our guests are, first of all, Sheena Devines, um, who works at the beautiful Castara Retreats in the gorgeous village of Castara in the northern coast of Tobago. I will introduce that little area um, uh, very shortly on my presentation. Um, and Sheena is going to introduce you to the property and talk to you about that lovely village area and all the little secret little nooks and crannies that that little village has to offer, as well as a gorgeous property. Um, following Sheena, we will have Phil Williams, who is one of our premier tour guides um, and excursion operators in Tobago. And Phil is going to talk to you about that whole region. Um, all the way up to from Black Rock, all the way down to Castara, um, uh, introducing to a lot of the little secret nooks and crannies that that whole region has to offer, um, as well as obviously a little touch on Castara Bay as well. Um, I will also like to introduce Marsha Patrick, my colleague in Paradise. Um, she, she will be on the questions and answers today. So if you have any questions during the presentation, please put that in the chat. I can't remember which area was it Sarah just jump in which one is it again which area into the Q&A into the Q&A um so Marsha will uh, Marsha thank you Sarah Marsha will answer as many of those questions as possible but after each section after Sheena's finished if there are any particular specific questions about Castara that uh, Sheena can answer then she will answer that and then after Phil's sec section as well if there's anything that Marsha hasn't answered after Phil's presentation then Phil will also answer those questions so um, hopefully that all makes sense. Um, uh, without further ado now, I would like to start with the presentation. Now, every year, every year, every presentation, if you've been on some of the presentations in the past, I introduce a particular uh, video which gets everyone into the mood and vibe of Tobago. Now, this one is slightly, I'm going to introduce you to a new video, um, which is slightly different. It still gives you into the nice mood, into the mood of Tobago, but it's with a focus on festivals and uh, traditions. And I believe that's the video, what the video is called, Traditions and Festivals of Tobago. So I shall start with this video. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. The Tobago Heritage Festival is us as a people reenacting with our old traditions full of dance, music, drums. It is the spirit of Tobago. This is an island of celebration. From the Black Rock Festival to the Harvest Festival and everything in between. In one specific village, we celebrate this harvest and you don't even have to know the people. You just come in and we welcome you. Then you enjoy the festivity. You could go from house to house. The impact of our music or drumming or singing or dance is its ability to bring people together. But it's also that idea of heritage that we connect to all the time. Anytime I hear the music or hear the drumming, it raises something in you. If you don't come to our island and do a bit of revelry, you are missing out. Music is the pulse of our people. It's the way we express ourselves can bring originate in this community. We love that music. Once we hear it, we had a go. The feeling, we see them, we had a give up, we had a dance. The Tobagonian dances, we have a number of influences, a lot of the footwork, a lot of the groundedness, which is representative of our African tradition. Most thing we famous for is the brush back. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. When you move, you feel. When you move, you engage. And when you move, you inspire. Tobagonians love to dance. Even our birds love to dance. Wake up, people, wake up. But amidst all this sound of different things and different cultural activities, what I really enjoy is a peacefulness that comes through all of it. We are a beautiful people, the people of Tobago. We show love and respect to strangers and hope that they will enjoy the island whenever they visit. Tobago is love. Tobago is unity. Tobago is rhythm. Tobago is community. Tobago is family. Tobago is tranquility. Tobago is have it. Um, hopefully that gets you into a nice festive party mood um, <laughs> for the presentation that will that will come ahead now. So moving swiftly on, I'm not going to show you that one, that's the one we normally So, First of all, where is our wonderful little island? As you can see, we're right at the very bottom of the crest of Caribbean islands. Um, uh, we are the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Our focus is only today on the beautiful island, which you've just discovered is paradise of Tobago. The reason why I show this image is to show you the vicinity of how close we are to South America and how South America actually has influenced us, influenced our island, particularly with our bird life and with the, the um, coral systems that we have surrounding for scuba divers, um, very much more than the other Caribbean islands. But yes, we are a Caribbean island. We are the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. But today, the focus is just on Tobago. Getting there, very, very, very easy. Um, uh, British Airways, for our uh, UK agents, British Airways fly twice a week um, via St. Lucia um, on a direct service to Tobago. There are There is another option, um, which is a Port of Spain service, or a Trinidad service, three times a week. One key little point I want to uh, add to that particular service is there are serious discussions right now with regards to making that a through service, enabling your passengers to check all the way through via Port of Spain, um, which, you know, we're, we're having discussions, or British Airways are having discussions with Caribbean Airlines right now to make that um, a, a real option, um, which would then enable you to offer five, up to five different services direct from London. Gatwick to Tobago, which I think is going to be fantastic. Um, for my North American guests and European guests, this is a slide I keep forgetting to add to our presentations, but I'm not going to read through all of these elements, but it just shows you that there are multiple other options um, or opportunities, particularly connecting with Port of Spain, allowing you to fly on with Caribbean Airlines direct from Port of Spain down to Tobago. The flight only takes 20 minutes, so getting to Port of Spain and then connecting on with Caribbean Airlines is almost as good as just going straight, direct straight to Tobago. So yes, lots of different options available. I take a screen grab of this image uh, just to give you some ideas. Now, speaking about the, the airport, um, one little key pointer that I keep adding um, and the latest update is that you can see at the very bottom here is um, a completion sometime during 2025, hopefully it will be earlier in 2025, but it will be happening in 2025, is our new airport terminal. Um, and the only thing, I mean, as you can see, you can new VIP lounge, new terminal, duty free, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one little key thing to add, uh, I did show this image. This is an image I, I've taken off um, social media. Um, it was, uh, and I, I downloaded it in February to show you that those terminals are well and truly being built and progress is well and truly on its way. So yes, this will be an exciting bit of news when it's completed, but it is scheduled to be completed in 2025. Now, um, my last um, bit of introduction is to the island itself. Now, the reason why I always have this slide is because I'm always asked, when is the best time to travel to Tobago? Now, the reality is, um, I, I always tell people, we are pretty much a year-round destination. First half of the year, December through to April, May time is classed as the dry season. As it says, it's dry. And the rest of the time, May through to November is regarded as wet season. 
Um, uh, but if anybody knows the Caribbean and has been to the Caribbean, you know that wet season isn't like monsoon over in Asia. We don't have months and months of consistent rain every single day, every single week. It is short, heavy showers. Average temperatures of approximately 30 degrees year round, uh, mid 20s and 30s. So whenever you go, you are guaranteed to get a little bit of color. Um, perhaps not as much as my color, but you know, you can work on it yeah. and uh, you know, you'll definitely get a little bit of color. Um, we've got, as you will find out, we have lots of festivals and activities throughout the whole year. So depending on what sort of activities you want to do, um, be it the scuba diving, be it the water sports, or attending some of the um, carnivals and festivals that we have, pretty much you can travel year round and find uh, Tobago, um, find something to do um, in Tobago. So yes, we are pretty much a year round destination. And uh, yes, the best time to travel is whenever you want to travel. Um, to introduce the area that we are going to be talking about, um, all the way up from Bloody Bay, um, La Anse for May, um, my, my Tobagonian colleagues will tell me how badly I pronounce that, but it's okay, it's fine, I did my best. Um, <laughs> all the way down to Costara Bay. Now, this is the area that we're gonna be discussing today. Um, from Blue Food Festival up here, down to Mariah, or where we have part of the Heritage Festival. So lots of beautiful, fantastic activities all happening in this Northern Caribbean area. The guys, all three of these guys know that, um, yes, um, this is my favorite part of Tobago. I, if I was to move there tomorrow, I would be living up here. I would find my little beach, my little spot up there, and that would be me in heaven. Um, and hopefully after this presentation from Sheena and from Phil, you will discover why this area is for me absolutely perfect. So without further ado, that's enough of me rambling on and introducing the island. I would like to introduce Sheena. Sheena, unmute yourself. Tell me that you're ready and that you're happy and ready. you're ready to go and rearing to go. Fantastic. Everyone, please give um, Sheena a round of applause and an introduction. No, I can't do you can't. <laughs> On a serious note, get your fingers ready and tapping over. There you go. Thank you. This, we do have a round of applause. I forgot you could do that. That's fantastic. Um, don't forget, if you have any questions, put those questions in. Marsha will answer as many as possible. And then Sheena will answer the rest at the very end. Sheena, please just tell me next slide. I have no problem in being shouted at um, when you're ready to move on. And, no problem. Uh, Without further ado, here is Sheena and Kassara Retreats. Hi, good day, everyone. You know, I'm happy to be here today to talk to you about one of Tobago's best kept secrets, Kassara Retreats, Caribbean Eco Lodges, and one of, one of Stephen's favorite places to be in Tobago. And soon enough, Phil, I've had Phil a few times with me up there in the last month. Um, waiting on Marsha to come to meet me. So yeah, I'm just, you know, happy to talk about all the offerings of Kassar Retreats and what we do. Next slide. So the concept of Kassar Retreats was really founded on offering visitors an opportunity for an authentic Caribbean holiday in a unique local style. Just to give you some background, the owner of Kassar Retreats came to Tobago over 25 years ago and like Stephen, fell in love with the location and he could not give it up. He needed to have peace of that paradise. So he really worked with the local community and specific families in the community to create this oasis of living in the landscape that we call Costa Retreats Caribbean Eco Lodges. So we have 17 self-catered one or two bedroom tree house style apartments, all with sea views. You have to have that sea view when you're in Costa We do have a restaurant on site that is also open air that offers breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We also offer wellness at the property, not just in terms of yoga, but also massages. And because of the bounty of assets that Tobago has, we have activities that we offer around the island, which includes snorkeling, diving, horse riding, and naturally bird watching um, throughout Tobago. Hussar Retreats is really well poised for couples, but because of the history in terms of how it started, you know, Steve coming with his family, a lot of what we do is centered around family-friendly activities. Next slide. So just delving a bit into the accommodation, you can see here from some of the images, we really wanted to play up on living in the landscape, as I mentioned. So we have four two-bedroom and 12 one-bedroom self-catering treehouse-styled luxury apartments, all with ensuite bathrooms, 
and see views from as many angles as you can envision. There's one studio apartment, and this really came about because we felt that we needed to make, create a lot more diversity in the offerings that we have on the property. And each room has its own unique quality and characteristics. And I'll go through the map with you a little later so you can guess, you can make a guess in terms of why the rooms were named the way they were. Um, we are environmentally conscious, so air condition is located in each room, but we also offer fans as an alternative. And the rooms are all priced to suit the gener generosity of the space in terms of what it exposes you to. Just to give you some context, yesterday I was on site doing a workshop in one room with some of my colleagues and some colleagues were in the kitchen, well, the restaurants, we call it the kitchen, and another few we were on the east side of the property and we saw a pod of dolphins just swimming across the bay. So no matter where you are on the property, you can really immerse yourself in the sights and songs of nature. And it's really priced to factor that in. So the prices range from 105 pounds to 421 pounds per night. Next slide. So this is us from the ocean. So when you're sitting on a boat looking up or you're sitting on the beach looking up, this is what you would see for Kassar retreat. Um, I think Stephen's favorite room is tree up, so close hung, I believe. <laughs> but all of the rooms were inspired by the space that it was designed in. Um, so from Birdsong, Firefly, come all the way on the east side to Hideaway and River Breeze. It really is a reflection of the space that it was designed in. So I'm going to go through two rooms with you, and these are the two rooms that were available for us to do a slight tour before this training. As much as I would have loved to show you Coast Hangar, it's on the website, but we're going to go through Coco Palm and Hideaway, and let's see if you can appreciate what they have to offer. So this is Coco Palm. It's located, I would say, in the sense of the property, and it's one of those rooms that really give you a taste of everything that Kassara has to offer, including the community. So you can really enjoy the sights and songs of the village that the room overlooks. So all of our rooms are open air, you know, so you're allowed to have these views through the foliage. And like the room name suggests, Coco Palm, there's a few cocoa trees outside and a big mango tree and we're in the mango season right now so you can literally go outside hold your hand and a mango may actually drop in your hand <laughs> <laughs> and the decor was done in a way to really play into the natural elements of the space so like i said you know no matter where you stand in the property you can appreciate everything that nature has to offer uh the terraces for this room one is shared and then you have one private terrace that you can use at your leisure and like I said, the sights and songs of the community is very much present in this room. So we usually recommend that this room is used for people who want to immerse themselves with everything that Kastara has to offer. If you're a lot more song or sensitive to what's song, we'll suggest other rooms to you. And here we are going into the room. And every room has a canopy bed. And they are designed in a way, as I said, to make you really appreciate the landscape that you're in and appreciate the space that you're currently, you know, in, in Tobago, in Kassara. Our photos, we're very proud of them. Uh, again, being environmentally conscious, they're soft on your skin, but also don't use as much water. And we encourage guests to take care of them like they're their own. So here's a view of the community of the ocean from Coco Palm. All right, let's go to Hideaway. Next slide, okay. So Hideaway is one of those rooms that really takes you up to the top of the property. It's under the wellness studio. And like the name suggested, Hideaway, it's really tucked into the east corner of the property. And the concept behind this room is really being designed for lovers. There's an outdoor terrace. There's also an outdoor shower in every room. But this particular room has a shower cascading from one of the trees outside, which is quite lovely. When you come from, a, from your beach or you come from the waterfall, it's a great way just to rinse off and relax and take in everything that the outdoors has to offer. 
So just like Coco Farm, again, outdoor living area, well appointed in terms of seating areas, alfresco dining areas, and the kitchens are all well appointed for you to make a scrumptious meal. You can go down into the village and get your fresh catch of the day. You can get freshly baked bread from the clay oven or as we say locally, dirt oven. Their glasses for a bottle of wine, should you choose to have that. And Poco Palm is one of the favorite rooms among couples on the property and it's one of the more I would say pricier rooms on site. And let's go to the back terrace. So as I mentioned, this room in particular, it allows you to appreciate not just the front in terms of the panoramic views of the ocean, but you're also able to really immerse yourself into the rainforest. And this spot right here, you can actually hear the river flowing in the background. It's amazing to stargazing on a clear night. Uh, the landscaping around the property and even just the natural landscape in and around Castara really welcomes a diversity of wildlife. So you're able to see over 70 species of birds just sitting right here. Um, there are goatees, there are squirrels, there are quite a few squirrels, <laughs> iguanas. You can take all of that in, in this spot. So that's the beauty of Hideaway. You have a front terrace you also have a back terrace so you have the best of both worlds you have the ocean in front of you and how you have the rainforest behind you and like Popo Farm the beds are all canopy and appointed with sufficient storage areas to place your belongings we also have a safe in each room and fans on both sides of the bed just to make sure that you're comfortable during your stay in the event you do not wish to use air condition. And that is Hideaway. Thank you very much, Stephen. So our wellness center, which is just upstairs from Hideaway, is managed by Leah and Judah. Uh, they're well certified in massaging and delivering various types of yoga uh, techniques, but they have their preferences. And we have free daily drop-in yoga. Once you're staying at the property, you can drop in. You can also book a one-on-one -on -one session with the girls. They're very good. They're very conscious of injuries or pre-existing conditions, which is, what, which is something I really appreciate about them. Uh, you can also get full body massages, Indian head massages, which is something Judah came up with from all her experiences in terms of doing massages with her tutors and experiencing different uh, techniques globally. We also have a wellness retreat that we have yearly. Um, it's usually in November and it's led by Judah or in-house wellness manager. And the space can also be used for special events. We do small weddings and small gatherings like writer's retreats and anything that does not require a large footprint because we have to be conscious of the space that we're in. Next slide. Caribbean Kitchen. So I'm very proud of the journey that Caribbean Kitchen has taken, particularly over the last two years. Um, we have done a lot to revamp the menu and make sure it's definitely aligned with our concept and our ethos of being sustainable. So the takeaway is that we want to be a kitchen that offers a modern take on Caribbean cuisine. So our dishes are crafted using fresh, seasonal, locally grown ingredients. And it's inspired by the rich heritage of Trinidad and Tobago, which you saw at the beginning of the video. So the African influence, French, and even our Indian influence is a huge part of our menu. It's important that we cook responsibly. Everything that we do is made from scratch. And if we can't make it in the kitchen, we make sure to align ourselves with partners that have that ethos and we know where they're sorting the ingredients from. And it's made with love. Like the video said, everything is to be is, is love in Tobago. So we literally say Kastara is love. 
right? It's open seven days a week for breakfast, lunch, dinner. And of course, cocktails. <laughs> we do have a happy hour during the busy season where you can where you can experience the bespoke cocktails that the team has created. And I just want to point out that Kastara as a community has a smuggers board of, of experiences where you can eat different types of cuisine. Um, and we made sure that we do not want to encroach on that. So Caribbean's, Caribbean Kitchen's offerings are distinctly different from what you would find in the village. So if you're feeling for something specific and we don't offer it, we always encourage guests to go down into the village, to, River, to Riverside Cafe or Chino's or any one of the restaurants on the beach. We are very familiar with them and we can make a recommendation that would suit guests. Next slide. So as I mentioned, you know, previously, sustainability has been a huge part of what we do. We have built the property to live within the landscape. So we had to be very conscious of the space we're in. Kastara is a very close-knit, strong community. So a lot of what we do um, is influenced by the community spirit. And it has always been a goal for Kastara Treats to lead the way in not just sustainable tourism, but regenerating the opportunities that the community has around them. And they, they, we have been doing that for the last 20 years. Next slide. So most recently we were awarded our Green Key certification. And it was important for us to pursue this because Kostara from Mariah, um, going right up to Lansme, coming around to Bell Garden. And today you'll hear about those other communities from Phil. They're all parts of the UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserve. So the properties, the businesses, the people within those villages ideally should have a strong appreciation for the assets from the ridge to the ocean that they have and how they protect it. So Kastara Treats, um, it was very important for us to make sure that we buy into the vision of UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserve by being a Greek key certified property. And it was very easy for the team to achieve this because from inception, the staff has been very conscious of the space and the environment, and they worked very hard to leave a light footprint. Um, composting and recycling has always been a huge part of what we do. That's why our gardens are so lush. <laughs> you know, we spend a lot of time composting and reintegrating, um, you know, what we use into the environment in a safe way. Uh, we no longer use single-use plastics on the property. So a lot of the times guests would ask to take away a meal um, we don't have that option. We offer, you know, if you're in staying on the property, you can bring your plates or we'll give you a plate to carry back to your room, which is a lot safer for the environment. In terms of community engagement and support, sharing the wealth has always been at the center of Kastara Retreat. So quite a few of our um, team members and our family members, I would say, have started businesses as a result of the interest in Kastara Retreat. So we have Judah and Leah offering snorkeling, porridge, which is our in-house, um, one of our in-house managers, and he's our go-to guy for everything. He offers some amazing boat tours. Some of the ladies actually cook or bake bread for you, depending on your request. And in addition to that, since 2019, we've taken it a step further to work with one of our premier non-governmental organizations, Eric, to invest a lot in protecting the northeast of Tobago being the UNESCO Man and Biosphere Reserve. So once you have booked Kastara Treats, you would always see information in terms of making sustainable choices before you come and when you're on site. Thank you. Next slide, please. Community activities. This is something Stephen wants me to talk about a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> nightlife is important. So, you know, at the beginning, you know, the video spoke a lot about the festivals and events that we have. But we do like to relax as well. And Kastara is one of those communities that really um, personify that concept of having a great mix of activities and, a, and, and just leisure and relaxation. So on Wednesday night, there's drumming. So you can get a real flavor for Tobago's dance culture and African influence on Wednesday night. On Thursday night, there's a beach bonfire um, at the main beach in Kastara. And then Saturday night, we have steel pans or steel drums, which you may know of, um, and barbecue at Chino's. Sometimes, depending on the season, we'll have karaoke on Tuesday, which gets very rowdy. Um, <laughs> and that's also held by Chino's. Next slide. 
waterfall. So you'll hear a lot about waterfalls today from Phil, but I just wanted to highlight the proximity of the waterfall in Kassara, um, from Kassara Treats in particular. It's a literally seven minutes walk. Um, and the beauty of all the waterfalls within this region is that they're within the, the rainforest, which is um, one of the oldest in the Western Hemisphere. So you would find a certain quality of water um, when you get into that space. So it's very magical for most people in terms of the freshness and the seclusion that they can experience that is very accessible once you know how to get to it. In addition to this, you know, as I mentioned, we have so many other activities in and around Kastara. There's snorkeling, there's diving. And if you want activities outside of this, we encourage guests to go to Radical Sports, where you can experience the bioluminescent stores and other activities. But within Kastara, you actually don't need to leave. There's a bounty of activities for you to do. Next slide. So just in a nutshell, you know, reinforcing what was said earlier, Tobago is love, Kastara is love. We have designed the property to encapsulate all of that. You know, two families coming together, a Welshman and a Tobagonian, and still working together 20 years later. It really is about rustic luxury, living in the landscape, surrounding yourself with nature, and really having an alternative accommodation experience. So it's not going to be a quintessential, all-inclusive, um, gated community. I like to say Kastara is a deconstructed all-inclusive experience. You can get all the amenities you want. You just have to go into the village or ask for it. They're extremely helpful. Um, you know, they treat you like family. And that's one thing I enjoy also working in Kastara. You know, they look out for you. It's very much a close-knit um, community and a reassuring experience for our guests. So, you know, sustainability has always been at the forefront. And the, the fact that the community is so deeply connected to the environment just makes it a lot easier for us to achieve what we do. And I'll now hand you over to Phil. Or will I? No, I'll hand you back. No, to no, oh, yes, you won't. Yes. No, not Phil. No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Sheena. Um, how can I put this? I've fallen in love with Kastara again. Okay. <laughs> again. <laughs> Don't laugh, Marsha. Marsha knows already how, how I feel about Kastara. Uh, honestly, um, yeah, that was absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I've, I can't lie. I, I'm falling in love with Kastara once again. What a wonderful presentation. Really enjoyed hearing you, hearing about um, my favourite place. Um, and yeah, that was wonderful. Um, Marsha uh, and Sarah. <laughs> Any yeah. questions, any key questions that you want to highlight, Marsha, that you've already answered or any that you want to um, okay. share with yeah, Sheena? There's only one question that's coming, Sheena, for you. Um, do you offer roti at Kastara retreats? <laughs> no, but Riverside <laughs> Cafe, which is about five minutes walk from Kastara retreats, offers a delicious roti, usually on a Wednesday. So when I leave here, I'm going to get a roti today. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. Are there any more, Marsha, that you want to share? Any any other questions that you want to share to everyone? You know, I just, you know, Castara is a place, apart from Castara retreats, which I'm still endeavoring to go and spend some time. You know, Castara is really a place that epitomizes the Tobago people, the culture. And if you really want to get that feel of Tobago, Castara is a place to go. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Looking okay. forward to having you, Marsha. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you agents know, they know each other. It, it, it isn't they. I know they're playing as if they'd, oh, nice to meet you. But they know each other very, very well. Don't Stephen, you know? don't, don't talk the secrets out. Yeah, and secrets. It's all about secrets, this presentation. And I'm giving away some of the secrets. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Sheena. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And look, guys, if you do have any further questions, just put them in the in the um in the chat and we can we can always um, sort of address them at the end of the presentation. So now we shall move on to Phil. Phil, 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 Phil. Trinbago Tropical Torres. Phil and I, we know each other very well. Phil knows Tobago very, very well. Um, so without further ado, I would like to introduce Phil. Phil has already taken his mic off and um, his, this is Phil in his glory. Go ahead, Phil. So good day, everybody. As Stephen mentioned, I'm Phil Williams. 
of TTT excursions and I have been conducting tours on the beautiful island of Tobago for the last 10 years. And uh, this afternoon, I am going to be sharing with you some of the secrets that are found on the Caribbean coastline, particularly in this parish of St. John's. Tobago is divided into seven parishes. And I'm going to share with you some of the secrets of Tobago that will hopefully entice your appetite to one day visit Tobago, you and your clients. So after leaving Castara in the parish of St. John's, the next, next slide, Stephen. The next beautiful spot that you would find is a place called English Man's Bay, which was a estate established in 1773 and was owned by Gilbert Petrie. Now, this beautiful bay is as natural as it gets. If you look at the photo in front of you, you would notice that uh, it's a crescent shape, aquamarine. A uh, bay that is surrounded by prudent uh, greenery with sloping mountains right down to the bay that provides pretty much undisturbed bathing. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite bays of all in Tobago. Um, the sand is soft. Uh, in the next slides, even the sand is soft and warm and allows for easy walking. Uh, this bay allows for a good time reading as well. You can just simply throw your towel in the sand under the canopy, the dense canopy, and have a read and be undisturbed and hear the songs of the gentle songs of the wave crashing as you are massaged by the winds of the Caribbean ocean. How does that sound? Doesn't it sound really interesting? <laughs> but not only do we have a peaceful environment here. This is also a place that you can find. Next slide, Stephen. You can find a traditional type of fishing that we call pulling the seine or seine fishing. And this particular method of fishing involves a community. And of course, we invite our guests to participate in this experience. It's a, a net, an old method of fishing. The net basically is suspended vertically. The top end of the net is uh, supported by flotation, while the bottom part of the net uh, is supported by lead or sinking. And so the net is vertical. There is an arch that is made. And on that arch, on either side, you have uh, persons, fishermen, community members, and even tourists that uh, help to bring in the catch of the day. And guess what? The most important part of this exercise is not the fact that you get physical exercise, but you title to a portion of the catch of the day. So there are some community members who uh, use this for exercise, and this is their way of getting um, free catch of the day um, by just simply engaging in about an hour or one and a half of, of moderate exercise. So at Englishman's Bay, as much as the bay is very quiet, Stephen, next slide, please. As much as the bay is very quiet, you can find some uh, feathery friends at this bay. What you're seeing in front of you is one of our common residents, and it's called the Trinidad Mutmut. -Mut. Feathery friend to many, because if you simply offer a little bit of food, maybe you might have the company of this bird for the entire period that you're there at Englishman's Bay. And if you love Englishman's Bay, like I do, Stephen, next slide. And you don't want to leave, there is also accommodation in this area uh, that provides you a nice aerial view of the bay. Uh, this is one of the spots, one of my favorites, and that's me in the photo there with my uh, partner and daughter. We love this area, and I think that you will love it as well, and your clients will love this area as well. Stephen, next slide, please. So after leaving Englishman's Bay, the next notable area of interest is the village of Palatuvier. And uh, the spelling is P-A-R-L-A-T-U-V-I-E-R, -E which is said to be a perversion of the French word 
Palais Touvier, which means mangrove. So the locals long ago used to call this area Swamp Yard. It is pretty much different to what it looked like uh, many years ago, but uh, it is not only beautiful, but in this village, we have a lot of seasoned fishermen. So you're looking for wholesale fish. This is the village that you come to. And not only can you buy fish in this village, but there are excursions that are available from this end where you can go deep sea fishing. Next slide, Stephen. Where you can go deep sea fishing and catch fishes like what you see here in the image on the right. I think it's really a nice village, a very friendly locals that would engage you and help you out if you need any kind of information at all. It's very peaceful. And this bay also provides for good snorkeling and scuba diving as well. Next slide, Stephen. And the photo there, that's Lindell Winchester. So in Tobago, Stephen and Sheena and Marsha, they all know this. Almost all locals have what we call a nickname or alias, who is a local tour guide in the village and I rely on him to do some of the fishing experiences. His nickname or alias is Bones. Can anybody guess why this guy is called Bones? <laughs> Sheena, what do you think? Because he's slim. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, he's of a smaller he's frame. Bones because he's very <laughs> slim. So people here usually give you a nickname based on some characteristic of yours. You like to laugh, they may call you Smiley or something like that. So his name is Bones. And we have a pretty good time uh, calling people by their nicknames. In fact, some villages you go to, uh, if you ask for the person's legal name, they don't even know who that person is. You have to call them by their nickname or alias to get in contact with that person. So this is one of the friendly community members of the village of Palatuvier. Stephen? After leaving Palatuvier, we head into the village of Bloody Bay. And uh, Bloody Bay has seen change of names over the period of time from the 1600s uh, right up to the 1700s. Uh, one of the early names given to Bloody Bay by the English uh, was Rush House Bay. And after Rush House Bay, next slide, Stephen, it was called Anse Erasmus. And Anse Erasmus is French, Anse meaning bay, and Erasmus means lovely. So when you put the two together, what do you get? Lovely bay. In the 1700s, though, According to CR, CR, uh, the name is just slipping me at the moment. Uh, this area was called Bloody Bay because of a battle that took place here between pirates. And it is said that so many bodies would have fallen into the water and uh, the bay ran crimson. And from that time, from the 1700s forward, it was called Bloody Bay. But we are not here to discuss battles today. We are here to discuss secrets, right? And we want you to know and hear of some of the secrets that are available on the northeastern end of the island. So next slide, Stephen. Here is one of the secrets that I want to reveal or drop on you today. This is called Gravel Bay by the locals. In fact, if you look at one of the maps of the Bego, you will not see a name given to this area because it's it's pretty much known by the locals. It's one of our secret bays. Um, provides for, of course, extremely private uh, experience because very few people know of this bay. Next slide, Stephen. Video. So it's not a very large bay, but it's a very secluded and private bay. And um, to get to this bay, you have to climb down a gently sloping mountain, but it, it's where nobody really knows if you don't know how to get to it, of course. So you want to get to this bay or you want your clients to get to a, a, a bay like this? 
then you contact TTT Excursions. <laughs> right. So, uh, next slide, Stephen. So we have covered pretty much a, a, a number of the bays on the northeastern end of the islands, but Tobago does not only offer beaches and lovely beaches. We have things to do on the interior of the island. Uh, Tobago is home to the oldest protected uh, rainforest in the Western Hemisphere, and that area has been made a protected reserve since the year 1776. Now, in this part of the island of Bloody Bay, there are many waterfalls that are not known by even locals. There are some locals that have not been here. And this is a bump for Stephen because what I'm going to drop here now, I know he has not been to this uh, particular waterfall. Uh, this waterfall doesn't even have a name and requires a, a trek of approximately about an hour and a half uh, moderate walking to get to it, but quite worth the experience. Next slide, Stephen. So this is one of the secret waterfalls uh, that can be found within the Bloody Bay region. Um, of course, very secluded because very few people know of it. And Tobago is a place of secrets, may I add. Uh, there are many other areas that are not visited by local road trips, uh, simply because they are undiscovered. And you know that it's presented to be as unspoiled, untouched, uh, unspoiled, untouched, and undiscovered. Very fitting words to describe Tobago. Along the path getting to this waterfall, you may spot. Next slide, Stephen. You may spot this bird. This is called the white-tailed saber wing, and uh, this is a secret. Yes, because it's only found in two parts of the world. It's found in Tobago and an isolated part of Venezuela called the Paria Peninsula. It is Tobago's largest species of hummingbird and is found uh, in the northeastern part of the island only. Not only we do, do we have uh, rare birds that are found here, but we also have other creatures, next slide, Stephen, that are found in the Bay region as well. Uh, this is the oscillated gecko. And this gecko is endemic to Tobago. It's found only on the island of Tobago. So yes, we are a place of secrets. We are a place of uh, unique creatures uh, in our rainforest. We have quite a number of species of birds, bats, lizards, and a variety of trees uh, that, are, that, that are there for the viewing of the persons who are very much interested in environment and nature. We pretty much cater to those persons to a large extent. And how could I conclude our presentation, Stephen, next slide, without talking about food? Tobago is a place of food. If you want good tasting food, unique food, guess where you come? You come to Tobago. So I'm going to talk about the Blue Food Festival, which is celebrated every year. Uh, particularly during the month of October. It was started in 1997 and was a pretty much an effort to merge or bridge the gap between agriculture and tourism. So it started off as a very small community-based initiative and it uh, mushroomed into something that is celebrated and regarded as one of uh, the food festivals of the Caribbean that is worth a visit. So, Blue food may not be something that you have heard before, but you might be familiar with the name taro. Taro is the name of the plant, and we call it blue food because when you boil the tuber of the, the plant, it, it looks blue, like the photo that you're seeing there. Um, we eat not only the tuber or the root of it, we also eat the leaves. We make a dish called kalaloo with the leaves of it. And uh, the root of it, which is very versatile, we use it to make flour and a host of other dishes, is pretty much the star of the Blue Food Festival. Um, 
Next slide, Stephen. Here are some of the, the products that are made from the uh, dashi, you know, the blue food or the taro. We make drinks with it, we make punch, we make flour, we make bread. Uh, on your extreme left, that is uh, fish roll-ups stuffed with dashin. And then we have dashin mango ice cream. Mmm, very, very delicious. We have dashin banana bread, also very delicious. And this dashin coconut milk punch, ladies and gentlemen, that punch hits the spot. So if you want to try some of the local delicacies of Tobago, please make a visit and please encourage your guests to make a visit. I am pretty sure that they will be disappointed. So thank you very much for listening to my brief presentation. I hope that you enjoyed and we do look forward to seeing you all. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Phil, uh, I, the end of it, the end of your presentation, um, I, I didn't like it because I've just realized I haven't had lunch yet. And you showing me, I mean, I've seen the pictures, but showing all those images and then talking about the, oh gosh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I can taste it now. Um, you I can, can taste it? Taste. I can taste it in my mind. I can taste it in my mind. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. Round of applause. Come on, a big round of applause for Phil and Sheena. Big, big round of applause. That's just a one. So one, two, two, there we go. We can see, we can see, we can see the applause now. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Marsha, over to Marsha. Questions, any questions that you've answered or would like um, Phil to answer or you want to share with the group, which are really interesting questions? Yes, there's one question pending for Sheena. What is your pet policy at Castaro Retreats? We allow pets. We actually have an in-house pet called Carol. <laughs> Carol is my work buddy, um, mm -hmm. being a cat person myself, but we are open to animals on site. You just have to let us know about that um, prior to coming and we made the necessary arrangements. Okay, great. So Carol is uh, all yogi cats, I call her. She does yoga with everyone. <laughs> okay, so she's available for petting my own. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Right, so there are no pending questions for Phil. That means that he was did a very comprehensive job, I'm guessing. Absolutely. Um so yeah. Once again, Marsh, thank you. There was, there was, sorry to interrupt. There was one question that I thought was quite interesting, which was about the mosquito nets at Castara retreats. Um so that one um where you advise where you advise yes all rooms have nets that are installed above the beds which i think is um is an important thing to mention so um yeah that's that one <laughs> okay <laughs> thank excellent. you very much excellent thank you guys thank you thank you thank you sarah yes so i believe you've got a question for us um i, I think do Bill, i but... do or Stephen's going to ask it. So just as a reminder for everybody, you all entered into a prize draw today um, to win a £50 voucher onto the um, Tobago Rewards programme. Uh, Stephen is going to ask the question in a moment. So if everybody can go to chat, make sure that your drop down says everyone. And what we'll do is everybody gets a prize draw entry. The person that answers the fastest finger first gets 10 prize draws. And then we'll put you all in a magic spin to win. And I will let you know, uh, well, Stephen will let you know the winner um, tomorrow. So, Sarah, Stephen. Can I, can I, Sarah, do you know what? Can we can we offer two people that advantage, the extra, can we do it for two, two winners? Of course, yeah, it's been very, yeah? very, uh, because, yeah. You know what, I've got two questions here, which I love, I love both of them. And I was, I was trying to pick one and I just thought, no, they're both really nice questions. And they both reflect, um, one reflects something that Phil has said and one reflects something that Sheena has said. So I want to ask both of those questions and offer two people the extra bonus of uh, possibly winning. You see, that's uh, people are loving that. I like I like a bit of love. Um, <laughs> the, first, the first question, okay, this is for the first winner. And obviously, look, I can ask whoever wins this first one, don't enter the second one. Just give, it, <laughs> give someone else a chance. Right, the first question is... Um, how many apartments does Castara Retreats have? <laughs> come on, come on. I can't see. I, I'm not on the, the chat, so. Really who's... good. Okay, so the first person was Charlene, and she said there's 17. Sheena, that's correct, yes? Yeah, all right. Yeah. That is correct. Well done, well done. 
I saw from your reactions was that were there a lot of were there a lot of answers at that time? Yeah, I didn't see. yeah. <laughs> they were, <laughs> they were, they were well answer. done. You guys are paying attention. You're listening, which is fantastic. The second question um, is obviously something that Phil has said. Um, in what year was the Main Ridge Forest protected? Mm. Was that is that just as good as it just quick? Was that just as quick, everyone? Okay, we have a winner. Oh, it's a tricky one. Oh, is it? There are lots of wrong answers, are there, or what? No. <laughs> I, should, I want to get onto the chat, but I'm sharing my screen, so. I'll <laughs> oh, see you next. Okay, yeah. Hi. We have a Devona. Yeah, Devona. 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 Yeah. yeah. 1776. Yes, and that is correct. Is it not? Yes. yes, good. I'm, right. I'm glad you got that right. That was yes. a hard one. <laughs> was it? Was it? Was it difficult? Was it? I, I, I would love to see the chat yeah. to see. I because that's I obviously I know the answer to that one, but uh, I just thought it was a lovely question. These are lovely questions, guys. That is it. Thank you, guys, very, very, very much. One last thing to add um, and ask is, please, guys. I know you've just had a wonderful presentation and, and it's very, very informative, but we do have our online training program, OTT Tobago. Um, so please register and, and do the online training. It's very comprehensive and covers all aspects, including water sports, scuba diving, the main ridge forest, as, as Phil has talked about, as well as the bioluminescence, all sorts of bits and pieces are included in that online training. Um, I'm always looking for friends on Facebook, so look for Stephen Smith Tobago. Um, I'm, I'm always, I'm, Marsha, don't laugh. I need friends. I need Stephen, friends. There's one and more question for Sheena. You've Sheena, got a question from Sheena. Go ahead. Go ahead before we finish. Go ahead. How long can you stay at Castor Richards? As long as you can as afford as you... it. Yes. <laughs> as long as you can afford it. <laughs> as long as you wish. Yeah, as long as you wish. That I can yeah. We've that had question. people That's... stay up to a month, a month and a half. Yeah. And just to give you all a little secret, we're working on getting Starlink internet in, in Kastara Street. So for those mm. who want to be digital nomads, I think that would be very attractive to oh. you because connectivity around Tobago has been a little problematic, but the Starlink has been perfect. Mm. So Superb. something to let your guests know by the end of December, we'll have that installed. Secret. So, is that, so that's that's when I'll be moving to Tobago then? Yeah. No? Can, no? no? Am I not allowed, Marsha? <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> on that magical note, um, I'd like to say thank you, um, Sarah. I'm not thinking of getting anything, am I? Is there anything yeah. I've missed out? Okay, no, so, um, um, we, we have to have bits and stuff, so I guess you'll attend to that. If they put say again? just drop, there's a request for um, Sheena to share rate. Oh, to yeah. share her rates. Okay, the, the current rates are on the website. Um, we're updating the rates for next year so I can, you know, once that is up, once we have it, it'll be, it will go up. In terms of advisories, like travel agent rates, we don't have mm -hmm. that at the moment. Um, but um, we can take a look at it on a case by case basis if you perform really well. <laughs> <laughs> but currently we don't, but we do have off peak rates and peak rates usually is fifteen percent off, um, off peak period, which is pretty good. Um, you know. If you if you do really well, we'll see what we can work out. I'll throw something in there for you, Tracy. I think it's Tracy. Yeah. <laughs> Does Castara have an off peak? Who, please? Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, so. kind. It's been busy, but we do have a fifteen percent off peak from April to like November. Okay, great. Good to know. Rainy season. Rainy season. There you go. You see. Um. Well, on that uh, magical note, I would like to say thank you, guys. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Sheena. Marsha, as well, as always, my, my able, wonderful, fantastic Tobagonian sister. Um, thank you for all your assistance. Sarah, for organizing and arranging this. Thank you. Agents, for attending. It's been an absolute delight, an absolute pleasure. Please look out for the next one, the third in our series of Secrets of Tobago. We are obviously moving. For, we moved from the northeast to the northern coast, the North Caribbean, and we're going to move down to the southwest area of Tobago to try and introduce some of these fantastic secrets for you in about a month's time, I believe, or early November or sometime. sometime. Just look out for the invitation and please join us for that. Um, obviously, we'll be drawing a winner tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you bye, later, guys. guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.